Hello, welcome back to another segment of Systems of Equation. Uh, this is Daniel Fritz, the professor, also coming to you, showing you methods of solving systems of equation. We will talk about solving the system of equation using the substitution method. So let's look at a couple problems. T equals 4 minus 2s for equation 1, and then T plus 2s is equal to 6 for equation 2. What we want to do is we want to solve for t if necessary, and in this case it's already solved for us, but we can take this expression, since t is set alone, and we can take this expression and plug it into this equation for t in here. And then what we can do is we simplify by what? Distributing, uh, grouping our like terms, and then solving for the other variable, which is in, in this case is s. So let's do this. We have t is equal to 4 minus 2s. You see this? So we're going to take this 4 minus 2s and plug it right in here to this equation for t. So 4 minus 2s plus 2s is equal to 6. So we bring this out of the parentheses and do our uh, sim simplifying. And we have 4 minus 2s plus 2s is equal to 6. But look what happens here, basically. Negative 2s plus 2s. Uh, is equal to zero. We got ourselves a slight dilemma. Why? Because when we solve this or simplify this and we bring these two constants down, they're set equal to one another. Well, four equal to six, but four cannot equal to six because a value cannot be set equal to another different value, right? This problem type will be considered a problem that has no solutions. And we'll be talking about problems that have no solution in the future to come, especially when we go into matrices. Let's look at problem number two. 4x plus 13y equal to 5. And then you got negative 6x plus y is equal to 13. Well, what I would like to do, you can solve for either variable. You have two equations, what? Two unknowns. So you can solve for x to get x by itself. And then, of course, plug it into the other equation, or you can solve for y, get y by itself, solving for y, and put plug y into the what? Into the other equation to solve for the other one. So here, well, in this case, since this is much more simplistic, equation number two, we're going to solve for y in the second equation. And then substitute y from the second equation into the first. So we want to substitute. As soon as we solve for y right here, and then plug this into the first equation, right? So now when we simplify, we want to then solve for, for x. So after we simplify that expression, we want to then solve for x. So how will we do that? We got negative 6x plus y is equal to 13. This is us solving for y right here. And then we got y is equal to 6x plus 13. So what do we do? We're going to take this and plug this immediately into that first equation there. So 4x plus 13 times 6x plus 13 is equal to 5. So this is what we have here. So it'll be 4x plus 78 plus 169 is equal to 5. When we group our like terms, we have 82x plus 169 is equal to 5. So now we're going to take negative 169 to both sides, and then it simplifies to what? 82 x is equal to negative 164, but then what do we do? We're going to what? Divide 82 to both sides. And when we divide 82 to both sides, what do we get? We get a negative what? 2. x is equal to negative 2. What do we do next? Now I perform this thing called back substitution. So we take x is equal to negative 2, and we're going to plug it back into either one of the original equations. In this case, I like to use the second equation because the second equation is much more simplistic. So negative 6x plus y is equal to 13. We're going to take negative 2 and plug it in for x and then solve for y. And this is what we get. y is equal to what? 1. So here we have negative 2 for x and I'll say y. The result is going to be positive 1. Let's do another problem. Follow me over here and we'll see that x is equal to 8 minus 4y, and then of course 3x plus 5y equals 3 for the second equation. What do you think I'm going to do here? 
it's obvious to see that x is set alone by itself. So I'm going to use that expression, that equation, that expression to plug in for x into the second equation. So 3 times 8 minus 4y, parentheses plus 5y is equal to 3. So what are we going to do? We're going to do some distributing. We're going to distribute here. We're going to distribute here. And we're going to distribute there. And that's how we got 24 minus 12y plus, bring down the 5y, is equal to 3. We have like terms here, don't we? Remember back in middle school and high school and pre-algebra and algebra days? Early pre-algebra days, right? So 24 minus 7y is equal to 3. So what do you do? You got to solve for what? We got to solve for y, don't we? So we take negative 24 to both sides. And then we have seven, negative 7y seven equal to what? Negative 21. So see right here? This is our expression here. And then what do we do? This is the old ax is equal to c. Remember back in high school? And then when you divide a to both sides, you have this expression, don't you? x is equal to a. c over what? a. That's basically what this expression is saying. This is going back to a little bit of review, remember? So when you solve for this, just like this, basically, what do you have? With 7, negative 7y seven is equal to negative 21, dividing negative 7 to both sides, y is going to equal to what? 3. So look what we have here. After we have that, what do we do? We do back substitution. So we're going to plug y is equal to 3 back into one of the original equations. I like to use this one because all we have to do is just plug the y in and we get our x easily, don't we? So, 8 minus 4 times 3, and then we have x is equal to 8 minus 12, and x equal to negative 4. So our solution set here, our ordered pair, is going to be x is equal to what? Negative 4, and y is going to be equal to what? 3. Now let's run a check real quick. We didn't really mention this much uh, for the first two problems. However, we did talk about running the check when we were doing the application problems in the other video. However, let's do a little check for this one here. So we know that we had what? X was equal to what? X was equal to negative 4. X was equal to negative 4. And then Y was equal to what? Y was equal to 3. So we plug these right back into the original equation. So as we plug this back into the original equation, this is what we get. So 8 minus 4 times 3 will give you a true statement of what? Negative 4. So that is actually a true statement. So we know so far that these two numbers are the correct solution. So far. Don't take for granted if you do one equation that it's going to work for the others. We might have made a mistake. Let's hope not. Let's plug these same values into the second equation, which is this here. So when we do that, we got 3x plus 5y. 3x plus 5y is equal to 3. So here we do. For x is negative 4, and for y is 3, and so as we got negative 12 plus 15 equals 3, that means that that makes that solution true, and that is true because when you plug this in to these values in and simplify it, you do get the, the answer to the uh, original equation, the correct solution to that. So the correct solution to that bottom equation is 3. So your x equals to negative 4 and y is equal to 3 is absolutely, absolutely correct. So we can definitely go home for the day and be happy and be ready for the next videos to come.